and welcome to World War G. I'm Troy. Troy is literally one of a kind. He's a goblin or a hobbit or a cobalt, which is a type of gremlin. I'm AJ. AJ, what kind of name is AJ? Oh, you race cars? Hopefully the sound is better this time. Yeah. <laughs> than last week. I apologize. We, I don't, we do a sound check before each episode. Yeah, I don't know what happened last week. I don't know why the sound went screwy. But I'm going to keep an eye on it this week. Make sure everything's good. But yeah, I don't I don't know what happened. Um, how was your week? Uh, it was pretty good. So one of the things I did, uh, I was randomly scrolling through TikTok and Mythical Kitchen, which is a branch off of Good Mythical Morning, yeah. right? Yeah. Mythical Kitchen, they were doing this thing where if you mix two parts Coke and one part A and W root beer. It tastes exactly like Dr Pepper. Oh, you, you, yeah, you sent me that video. Um, I had some of my cousins that were um over, and I'm like, well, we're gonna test this out. So we went right to the store, uh, got this stuff, tried it out. Like, and I measured. Like, I'm sitting there and holding like a um, like I got really precise with this yeah. as far as like measuring cups go. Yeah, and measured it all out, got it all even, stirred it up a little bit, and like tried it. It was close, but it wasn't the same. It was no Dr. Pepper. Right, 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 right. And we had, like, a Dr. Pepper right next to it to, like, try to test this out to see if it would work. But, yeah, that was the highlight of my week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> that was pretty, it was pretty good. How about yours? My week's been okay. Um, still battling the back. Um Battle issues. of the bulge. Yep. Yeah. Quite literally. Yep. <laughs> Raging bulge. Oh, I don't know. There's something in there. Um, Battle of Bulge was a thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Bulging disc. Battle of the Bulge. Yeah. So I still got that going on. Um, I went and saw the Eternals again yesterday with the GF and her family, uh, which I'll talk about in Revs and Rex. Uh, They've warmed up to you, the family? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, after the tool she was married for for 16 years. Right. I'm like a godsend. Uh, <laughs> Not to brag, but that guy was a jackass. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. <laughs> Fucking tool. <laughs> um, And I'm sure my family feels the same about her. So, yeah. 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 So it's, it's good all around. Glad but yeah, I'm, I've, I've always been very good with like girlfriends, families and stuff. Right? Come off, like, really super sweet and nice yeah. and, yeah, cordial. Well, it's been very easy to get along with. And... Oh, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Yeah, Do you exactly. change your voice at all? You know, like, when you're doing, um, so, when you're speaking on the telephone, my mom, like, she could be yelling at us and telling us, like, get, get to your room right now, yeah, like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. and then, like, the phone would ring and she'd just be, hello yeah hi oh pleasure yeah like what the fuck why don't we get this mom why do we get that mom like <laughs> yeah parents are very good at that right yeah. but uh, see that's what i'm wondering is it the same when you're meeting like their family do you like change no i don't your... no i don't change no not at all less less swearing <laughs> yeah less swearing <laughs> especially with that family yeah do, can you still talk nerdy to them or are um, they not into the geek scene? Not, not really. I don't think so. Damn, I was hoping that was like that was your in or something. Yeah. There, it's like, oh yeah, we love these movies. So then they'd ask you, like, you know, for movie recommendations and stuff. Right. Yeah, and and me, I don't, I don't talk a lot anyway. Right. I've always been more of a, I'm kind of a, a watcher. Mm-hmm. Um. So, you're, yeah. you're like the watcher in Marvel. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, I'm just happy, like, you know, being here, like, participating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll Makes just sense. stand in the corner and listen to everybody's secrets. Yeah. <laughs> Use them <laughs> for a future date. <laughs> Fair I'm enough. like Tyrion Lannister that way. Right? I drink and I know things. <laughs> All right. Um, well, we have a taste test, but. Because, and you pointed this out, because our taste test going forward is going to be kind of holiday themed. Right. We're going back to what we did last year, and we're bringing back Seasons Eatings. Yes. Hog the eggnog. Don't share a drop. Slam on the turkey press. Get it, get it while it's hot. Don't be rude. Close your mouth. Till it's true. Seasons Eatings to my people. Enjoy the food. 
uh, we were very proud of ourselves when we thought of that name. Right. Like, yeah. I mean, occasionally we come across the one that we're just like, ah, what should it be called? Like, well, maybe we could do like something like this and that. And then like the season's eating. Yep. Boom. That's a great one. Uh, so I guess we'll start with this first. This is a hostess iced pumpkin cupcake. Hmm. Limited edition. So, you know, we're all about that here. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Mm. It smells like pumpkin. Oh, yeah, right off the bat. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but I've had these since uh, Wednesday or Thursday. It looks yeah. like they've, they've shrunk. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But I, I think they may have shrunk in the package. Really? Oh, since you purchased them? Yeah. Like, don't they seem small? But more I, condensed a little bit? Yeah. Like, sogified? I don't know what happened. But, oh, uh, I'm sure they'll taste the same. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's your typical hostess cupcake. Yeah. Got the frosting and the swirl on the top. So, is the cinnamon that I'm picking up, is that from the frosting or is that from the cake? Probably from I, the cake, right? I think it's probably from the cake. Hmm. Well, that's good. That is very good, yeah. That's really good. Oh, yeah. It's it's pumpkin, but it's not like hitching the face pumpkin. Right. It doesn't slap you with pumpkin. <laughs> uh, and I'd completely forgotten with these mm. Hostess cupcakes that they actually had the frosting in the center. Right. I was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. No. Mm. I do like that there's pleasant. a okay. I like that there's a contrast between the whipped frosting in the center and kind of the thicker, harder, uh, caked on mm -hmm. uh, top frosting. Mm -hmm. Dang, I I'm not getting any flavor from the the top frosting. No, because that a pumpkin textural thing mm, that yeah. pumpkin just takes takes over. It does, but not in a bad way. No, no, that was really good. That was mm. like typically we'll take like a bite or so, and then maybe like try a little bit like later on throughout the episode. Uh, it's like bored podcasting munching. Yeah, I don't know, <laughs> but that one, yeah, they're both finished. gone. They're both gone. <laughs> yeah, dang. Yeah, I'm gonna to, I'm gonna pick up a couple more of those. Right? That was that was tasty. Out of uh, out of five cupcakes. Honestly, I'm, I'm I'm trying to see why I wouldn't give it a five. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm at a five. Same, yeah. That was, was really good. Yeah. Mm. Dang, hostess, you knocked it out of the park again. Little Debbie, you get you guys got to keep up. Yeah, little Debbie has like eighteen hundred pumpkin snacks at this time, mm -hmm. and we tried them all, and they were all not good. No. And then, like, Hostess comes out with yeah. one. Hostess is like, here, what about this? <laughs> yeah. And it was funny. I had... we So we have another thing. I had this up in the fridge. Yeah. And you... <laughs> <laughs> you showed me a picture on your phone. Yeah, because I had taken the picture and I'm like, oh shit, I should have texted Troy and said like, hey, should I pick up some of these, you yeah. know, before they're gone? And I'm like, oh, actually, <laughs> hold up, <laughs> I forgot I have these in the fridge. Yeah, I already, I already purchased them. It is Mountain Dew Gingerbread Snapped. I honestly want to see a cartoon with these characters. With these gingerbread? I don't even care how it tastes. Like, I just want like a cool little gingerbread story. Well, this guy over here has a mohawk. Right. And this guy has an eye patch. Is that a lime on his eye? I don't know what no, I think it's a it's like one of those peppermint like candies. I'm like, damn, that's badass. Like that's like that's hardcore if you're you put like a lime on your eye? Yeah. <laughs> and look at they're getting ready to throw snowballs at this other gingerbread man over here. Right. As you just mind his business, mm -hmm. living his best life. They're about to like beat the shit out of him. And then you got this yeah. gingerbread house in the back. In the background, they really have snapped. There's, there's but a, there's potential for something. There's right? a story here. Yeah, yep, there's a story. Here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's this one. Uh, it was recently. I was at the grocery store and getting a couple of things, and then there was like a case of beer and a pregnancy. I swear to you, I'm not making this up. There was a case of beer and a pregnancy test that were just left on the counter off to the side. I'm like, yeah. decisions were made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Yep. <laughs> hey, babe, I'm sure you're not. You you washed down a couple of those Plan Bs with some beer, right? We're yeah, good. You're fine. <laughs> you're fine. All right. So this is do with a blast of artificial gingerbread flavor. What's your stance on gingerbread? Like it? I love it. Yeah. So I've got high hopes for this, but I don't know. All right. Let's check it out. Hmm. That's good too. Yeah, that oddly works. Right. That's why I'm like, <laughs> wait, do I like this? I do like this. It's yeah, it's it's like fizzy gingerbread with just a hint of Mountain Dew. Like after you mm. kind of taste it, then you get the Mountain Dew. You're like, oh yeah, that's Mountain Dew. It goes back like when it, you first sip it, it's gingerbread, and then all of a sudden you're just like, oh. oh, there's the Mountain Dew. Yeah. At the end. They clash those two together really well. What the heck? That really works. That's really good. That's oddly good. Yeah. All right. Um, out of five uh, Mohawk gingerbread men? I think, like, the only reason I think I'm going to give it a four and a half is because I... Liked the hostess cake a little bit better, but as far as like drinks go, like it's pretty solid. Yeah, it's, and I think the reason I'm also giving it a four because mm -hmm. it's, I mean, obviously it's soda, but it's like really super sweet. Yeah, it's good, but I couldn't like sit down and drink like more than like one of these. No, <sighs> but that's, it's a, good. that's like a sipping soda, it is right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like something you kind of like want to like save. Ooh, dude, that'd be really good with some rum. <laughs> yeah, or, or some, or some vodka in there. Yeah, yeah. Make the season, you know, the holiday season bright. <laughs> oh yeah, really bright. Uh, which reminds me again, our four hundredth episode. Yeah, drunk show. Yes, <laughs> it's it's fastly approaching. Yes, so look forward to that. You know, it's funny, speaking of this podcast, um, we both share the same chiropractor. Yeah. Right? Lundell. Lundell. And I started going back to him. I haven't been back to him uh, this first time in like three years I had gone to him. Right. Instantly remembered me. First thing he says, you still doing the podcast? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, I am. Uh uh, I think he might have, like, because I talked to him about the podcast, uh, well, I went for consecutively for about, like, a couple, like, two or three months. Yeah. Um, because it was paid for through my, <laughs> through my insurance, and I'm like, oh, you can get up to 12 visits a year? Hell yeah, nice. I'm gonna get all 12. Um, so I did that, and I was talking to him about the podcast, and then, like, the last time that I went there, he's like, I think I'm gonna start, a, like, a podcast. And so he's like, he does it every once in a while, and it's, like, heavy-hitting topics, because yeah. I thought about, like, ooh, you know, potential crossover, or, sure, like, you know, sure, or sure, sure. bringing them into the World War G family. Uh, but yeah, it's completely different, like, it's not nerdy at all. Right, yeah. More, more political. Driven. Yeah, I... I don't think he's very, very nerdy because, you know, I have that, um, I don't know if you've seen, I have a Ninja Turtle shirt yeah. that has, it's like just the bandana of Donatello. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I've seen that. Yep. He goes, oh, that's a, that's a nice Leonardo shirt. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> stay calm. Yeah. Stay calm. So I just went, thank you. <laughs> wow way to show some restraint yep. you've learned from like master splinter yep <laughs> said the gf got it for me thank you <laughs> do you also call or is it only on the podcast that you call her the gf yeah okay <laughs> I, I in other circumstances i'll say my girlfriend right <laughs> i just wondered i'd only heard like because i've only heard you say the gf yeah. so yeah do you ever <sighs> when's the last time you ran into your ex Never, I've never, really? ran, I've never ran into that one. Yeah, mine came into my work Saturday. Really? Okay. Saturday morning, like intentionally six thirty. Yeah, she she knew you worked there, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. She, I got. She basically told me, said as long as I'm working there, she's not going to step foot in that store. Right. 
because she doesn't want to run into me. Yeah. No, but she came in. And it's one of those things where you like, you do a double take. Mm hmm. Because I was at one end of the store, right? I was working on like pallets and stuff for deli. She comes in. I'm like, oh, that kind of looks like, oh, it is. No. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Doing everything in your power to just kind of avoid her. Luckily, we, our paths didn't cross. But yeah, that's it's such a weird feeling. Yeah, yeah. like just in the pit of your stomach, just yeah, it all drops. Like you have, it's like like you're having a good day, listening to a podcast yeah, or something, yeah, yeah. and then just boom. Because it's like, well, then you see, it, it, it's weird because it's like we were at one point we were so close, we knew everything about each other, right? Everything, yeah, 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 right. And good, then, bad, ugly, yeah, all of it, yeah. One day you're good, the next day, boom. You're done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like you're strangers now. It's such... It's so weird. Yeah. There's a huge contrast, for sure. Uh, I've ran into, like, ex-girlfriends, but never, like, you know, the ex-wife. The ex-wife, yeah. Yeah. It's like, we used to have sex. <laughs> it's like... It, yeah. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> so, normally we do... Happy birth death day, right? right? Well, I was looking at the side I usually go to, and I was looking at the deaths, and there was like nobody of note. It was like old English composers and German writers. Does that mean that we have to like kill people today? To well, like, it'd be nice. To get more people of note. It'd be this, nice. Right? It would really help us out in the podcast. If someone famous, like really famous, like an actor or something, would die today, like it'd be it'd be helpful. Watch, we just jinxed it all of a sudden, you know, Tom Hanks. I know. COVID. Shit. Find <laughs> out Tom Hanks died today. Like, ah, son of a bitch. <laughs> but no, so what I ended up doing is I went to another part of this website where they had uh people that had gotten married today. Right. No. So for the first time ever, it's going to be happy birth wedding day. Oh man, this is like a limited edition. I know <laughs> segment. <laughs> I'm going to, have to do another sound bite now. I just realized. I'll throw it together. Um, all right, so here's the people that were born today. Um, I'm pretty sure you're not going to know these people by name, but their works. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. So first one born today on, uh, or in 1916, Sherwood Schwartz. Uh, the first name sounds more familiar. Like, cause like Sherwood Forest or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, Sherwood Schwartz, um, worked in the entertainment business, particularly TV, and he was a producer. Oh, okay. Television producer. And some of the TV shows that he produced, you may have heard of them. Gilligan's Island. Yes. The Brady Bunch. Okay. Um, there were some other here. That alone, like, that solidifies, yeah. like, you know, yourself as... That puts you in the Hall right. of Fame right there. Oh, right? for sure. Um, <clears throat> I love the hell. I still know the whole theme song to Gilligan's Isle. <laughs> we used to watch that before um, school. Like, um, yeah, there was like 30 minutes. It was like 7.30. We had to be up to school, but like at 7 o'clock, mm -hmm. we'd watch Gilligan's Isle. Except for we never got to very see, see the very end of the episode because we had to drive up to school. Yeah. Yeah, that was the same for me in uh, like Mighty Max. Remember that show? Mm -hmm. Same thing. Oh, yeah. I never saw the end of the episodes. Uh, so other TV shows he produced... So, I Married Joan from 1953, The Red Skelton Hour from 1956, It's About Time, 1966. Oh, I love that comedian, Red Skelton. Red Skelton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's pretty funny. Dusty's Trail, 1973, Big John, Little John, Harper Valley PTA, Together We Stand, uh, The Sounds Brady Bunch, Gilligan's See, Island. 
it sounds like, wait, okay, so did he do Gilligan's and the Brady Bunch before those other ones, or did he do all those other ones? Like, was it he'd done all these other ones that had done all right, and then all of a sudden he had these huge big successes? I think or, so, yeah. Okay, I was just wondering if it was like a you know, rise to fame really quickly, and then all of a sudden you kind of taper off. And Well, in those ones, he, he, he wrote and also produced. Um, let's see, let's look at his filmography here. Because I want to give the guy his due, you know? Right. He was he was a pretty big deal. Um, let's see. Producer. He has 22 credits. The Real Gilligan's Island. The Brady Bunch 35th Anniversary Special. A very Brady sequel. The Brady Bunch movie. Gilligan's Island. The Brady's. Well, he really stuck to those two he sure TV did. shows. A very Brady Christmas. <laughs> Damn. Nothing is Easy. The Invisible Woman. Scamps. Uh, the Harlem Globe. Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island. Yeah. <laughs> the Brady Brides, Harper Valley PTA, The Brady Girls Get Married, The Castaways on Gilligan's Island, Rescue from Gilligan's Island. <sighs> yeah. It's like one of those dudes that, like, you know, ride it until it's dead. Yep. <laughs> so Gilligan's Island and the Brady Bunch, those were his big two claims to fame. Well, happy birthday, sir. Yeah, he's he's been dead for a while, but yeah. that's okay. <clears throat> Um, this one, you might know. Well, you don't really pay attention to credits much, so you may not. <laughs> Born on this day, 1927, McLean Stevenson. Sound familiar? It does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was part of one of your favorite TV shows. You 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 rave about this a lot. We talked about Firefly. Nope, not Firefly. We talked about this very recently, actually, since we went to Comic Con or Fan Mash. Mash. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He played Colonel Blake. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. I'm like the name sounds so dang familiar. Yep. Uh, yeah, he died in 1996, but yeah, Colonel Blake. He was the one. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Because my MASH knowledge is very limited. He was the one that got killed, right? Right. They sent him off in the helicopter and he got yeah, shot down. Yep, yeah. shot over the sea. Yep. Okay. Which, it was crazy because then the next episode, they'd kind of mentioned it a little bit. But all these people that died, they didn't... There wasn't many that got, like, the proper send-off. Right. Um, yeah. Um, born on this day in 1948, Prince Charles... Familiar with him? Mm-hmm. Um, the name he, says it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody knows who Prince Charles is. I think he's actually going to become king once Queen Elizabeth dies. Really? He's next, next in line? I think he's next in line, yeah. And he's, I mean, he's, what, like in his 60s? Well, he was born in 48, so he's older than that. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see, Prince Charles. So, his title is Prince of Wales. Is Charles. Oh, he's, seven, he's 73. Prince of Wales. Oh. He's the heir apparent to the British throne as the eldest son of Queen Elizabeth. Also, of course, famously married to uh, Princess Diana. We all know how that ended. Um, <laughs> that is still yeah. like there's so much craziness around that you know that's like that to me is on the same level as far as like the JFK JFK yeah right yeah, yeah. as far as like conspiracies other stuff like paparazzi involved yeah I remember that being all over the news yeah. there's a lot of people in uh, the UK that think that MI6 was responsible for her death really yeah okay yeah. But my question is, why are there still royals in England? Yeah. Why are they still hanging on to that? Mm hmm. Because at this point, they're basically, they don't really like make laws or anything like that. That's all no. like parliament and stuff. Yeah. They're so, just kind of puppets. Yeah. They're kind of like figureheads. But right. Why? At this point, they're more like celebrities than anything else. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. And the taxpayers still have to pay for them. Is that just holding... They don't mind because they're holding on to these older traditions? I think... I think if you would... 
to ask most people in the UK, they would say, just get rid of them. Yeah. We don't care. There's got to be a bigger agenda Man, reason good. for holding them on. Yeah. On to them. I, I guess tradition, I would assume. Yeah. Mm. All right. Um, and then finally, born on this day in 1975, Travis Barker. I'll give you a hint. He's a musician. Blink-182. There you go. Boom. I'm like, I know. Uh, I thought for a minute. I'm like, some 41? No. Because they sound... Uh, ah, look at you. Boom. Yep. Uh, drummer for Blink-182. Yes. I hate that band. No, uh I hate Blink-182. What? Uh, I love their music. I cannot. I cannot abide Blink-182. I think they are really annoying. None of their songs. Mm -mm. I'm going to pull up their list here. Now, I know a lot of their songs. All because, the small things. Yeah. What's my age again? Mm. Adam song. That that song is yeah. fucking depressing. Do not listen to that song if you're in a bad mood. <laughs> like, uh, uh, apple juice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Drop the apple juice in the hall. Spilled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's the whininess of the lead singer's voice that I cannot stand. Okay. Yeah. All the small things. True care, true brings. I, I, you just, oh, just shut the fuck up. Let me rose in spots. I kind of like that. Miss you. British. A little a bit of an accent in the mix. Kind of, but it's, it's. It's just, it's annoying. <laughs> he puts the you, he, like, the ya sound on a lot of words that don't need ya on them. And it's really annoying. Anyway. <laughs> um, so let's move to those that got married on yes. this day. All right. On this day in 1532. Damn. Henry VIII married Anne Boleyn. Really? And we all know how that ended. I'm Henry the Eighth. I am mm -hmm. Henry the Eighth. I am. I am. She I got, got married to the waiter next door. She's been married seven times before, and everyone was a Henry. Henry wouldn't have a Willie or a Sam. No, sir. I'm a eighth old man. I'm Henry. Henry, Henry the Eighth. I am. Bam. I don't even know why I know that song. <laughs> <laughs> Herman's Hermits. Yeah. Uh, married to Anne Boleyn. Yeah, and again, that marriage did not end well. <laughs> no. No. It's funny. He actually went and created the Church of England because the Catholic Church would not let him, him get mar married. married again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, well, fuck you. I'll create my own church because I'm the king. Which wouldn't that like make a lot of people and Christians think twice about churches? If a king can just like start up a church. Be like, you would think. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people are still part of the Church of England, but whatever. Traditions, huh? Am yeah. I right? <laughs> it's like being part of Scientology. Yeah. Like, that was a religion, if you want to call it that, that was founded by a science fiction writer. Right. L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> Doesn't raise any red flags? Yeah. Freaking you know, dumbasses. Okay. <laughs> Uh, married on this day in 1965, Judy Garland married actor Mark Herron. Quick, who's Judy Garland? I know, that's why I'm like trying to think, because I'm like, I don't recognize the husband, <laughs> but I recognize her. I know she's an actress. She was in one of the most famous movies of all time. My Fair Lady? Nope. Uh, uh, Earlier than that. Singing in the Rain? Earlier than that. Uh, it is like more of a musical, right? It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm like, I know it's that direction. Uh, Set the tone for a lot of movie musicals. I love me some musicals, too. How old are we talking? Like, wait. I think it came out in 30... I want to say 38? Ooh, damn. 39? Right around there? I'm not even sure. I can't think of it. White Christmas? She played Dorothy. Oh, okay. Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, yeah, she got married in 65. They were divorced in 69. Dang. Yeah. 
That she, lasted a while. Yeah, she she had issues. Um, married on this day, nineteen ninety. She had like a temper. Is that what it was? <sighs> no, she had uh, some dependency issues, um, drug addictions. Oh damn! Yeah. Okay. Her life was kind of a mess after the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, if you really want to be depressed, <laughs> read about her life. While listening to the Adam song. <laughs> yeah. She was actually on set, Wizard of Oz. Uh, you know the scene where they meet the Cowardly Lion? Yeah. She kept laughing during that scene. And so the director came over and slapped the shit out of her. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, wow. Kind of like. came over and just slapped her. Ah. That's when a producer could be a producer. Mm, right. <laughs> That's when you can really get away with stuff. <laughs> That's when men were men in Hollywood. <laughs> Make Hollywood great again. Uh, <laughs> we need like a hat. Or a we do. A we do need red hats. So Make Hollywood great again. Uh, that'd be great. <laughs> Let me name of the episode. Make Hollywood great again. <laughs> um... Yeah, th- there are so many like horrible tales from the Wizard of Oz. Like, oh yeah, how that movie ever got made is mm-hmm. a miracle, and it's crazy that it's still like a iconic or it's a classic, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, you can you can also see a person hanging in the background. I know there's quite a few people that's, that died on set. That's actually a rumor. Is it really the hanging? Yep. No, that's a rumor. Oh, damn it! It's actually it's actually a uh, a stork. A giant stork. Really? Yeah. You can see it in other frames, and then if you kind of get like a DVD copy or whatever, where it's a lot clearer, you can see that it's clearly a stork. Uh, Oh. Or they took it out. No. (laughs) (laughs) Because even when you look at the VHS copies, it's not that clear, but you can still... Because it it spreads its wings right before the scene ends. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I know. It's been a persistent rumor ever since that movie came out, so I don't blame you for it. Uh, is there any validity to playing the Wizard of Oz and also listening to Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon album? My brother and I actually tried that once. Really? Like you wait for the lion to roar mm-hmm. and then that's when you press play? Yeah, he had the album. I forgot which one it was, but yeah, we sat down it was Dark here. Side of the Moon. Okay. Yeah. We listened to the whole album while watching the movie, and it... I mean, kind of. There's a few things that kind of match up, but like when he uh, when they start in with the money song, that's right when she goes into the Emerald City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but I mean, it's not like a a one to one match, but there's a couple things there. That would be like that would take so much time, but that'd be so cool of like a person to do, right? My brother actually discovered that uh, if you play the Beatles song. Uh, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Backwards? No. Oh. As soon as she opens the door to Oz, it matches up almost perfectly. Really? Yeah. Okay. Like, it's weird. But, anyway. Uh, Yeah, also married on this day in 1996, Michael Jackson married Debbie Rowe. I assume you know who Michael Jackson is. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Say what you want about the man, but he sure touched a lot of people. (laughs) He... Sure did. He sure did. I regret that when I was in Vegas, I didn't go see that show. They had they had it there, like playing? at at the Stratosphere that I was staying at. Yeah. Oh, okay. it was like the show at that at that place. This is it, wasn't it? No, it was. A- um, it's an impersonator mm-hmm. that kind of okay. goes through his career, and I wish I would have seen it. Maybe that would have made that trip actually enjoyable. <laughs> uh, also married on this day, finally. Or finally married on this day. Um, Dennis Rodman married himself. Carmen Electra. Oh, okay. <laughs> Didn't he? All, he also married himself, though, he right? Did. Yeah. yeah. That was so dang weird. Yeah, Dennis Rodman, certifiable crazy person. I hated him like so much growing up, like being a jazz fan. Oh, yeah. Like I couldn't stand the dude, like his hair and like people were making like fun of him. And, but he, like he was so damn good at getting rebounds and for just instigating yep. shit. Yep. That's, that's why, I, that's why they kept him around. Yeah. 
Um, which I saw recently. I saw like this other video where was they were doing an interview with like Scotty Pippen, and they're like, "How would you like to be remembered?" He's like, "The greatest of all time." And then like it cut to a scene with like Michael Jordan, but, like, uh, like kind of like giving him the weird like squinty eye look. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I he mean, he wrote his coattails, yeah. dude. You can't help but feel bad for Scotty Pippen, man. Yeah, I mean, he he was basically number two. To, like, the greatest player of all time. Yeah, see, but, like, at the same time, uh, you have somebody like Kobe Bryant, who was in the shadow of that big-ass Shaq for a long time, mm -hmm. right? And he kind of, like, played his role for a little bit, and then he got his chance to make his rise to fame. Right. So I feel like Scottie Pippen, I don't know if it was just, like, uh, they timed their careers the same. I think that's what it was. kind of, like, happened that way. Yeah. Uh, look at yeah, us talking yeah, yeah. sports. <laughs> <laughs> it's basketball. I can talk. I can talk '90s basketball. Yeah, like all day. Oh yeah. Um, see, but that's what I'm saying. Like, it, there, it's still possible to kind of have a successful career. Even like Tim Duncan did it. You know, yeah. being with like David Robinson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think it was just the timing. I think they they were roughly around the same age. So I think they started roughly around the same time. And right. It was like a Stockton Malone thing, mm -hmm. um, except you know those two were kind of on equal playing fields, right? You know, right? They kind of shared the spotlight. Um, th that's also when in basketball, when teams like stayed loyal, like players stayed loyal to teams. Yeah, you had you know John Stockton, Carl Malone. You had Scottie Pippen, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. Uh, you had the two towers, mm -hmm. right? Each team had these dynamic two big players, um, and it was it seemed a little bit more even. Yeah, in the NBA, it wasn't like complete. I mean, yeah, the Bulls kind of like dominated, but at the same time, it still felt like these other guys had a chance. Yeah. Now you'll get like a team where it's just like these guys have won like seventy games, and the next closest team is like at forty. Yeah, yeah. we have like golden state and then the rest of the league mm -hmm. yeah. oh in the east yeah for sure uh same with like uh not so much now but it used to like the west used to not be so close where it was just like the lakers yeah and yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody else all right um that's it for that so let's get to this week in geek this week in geek so we take a look at all the interesting geek news throughout the week um, so we have, a. It, it's, it's rare, but we have a correction to make. Yes. I know it's weird. Yeah. It's yeah. very rare when it happens. <laughs> we're usually perfect. Mm hmm But, uh, last week we were talking about Chris Evans being the sexiest man of 2021. Um, a lot of, a lot of dick talk <laughs> in that story last week. Want to go back and listen to that. But turns out um, that right at the very last second, Paul Rudd beats out Chris Evans for People's Sexiest Man Alive for 2021. Dang. I think it's his personality. It kind of shined through. I think so, too. Right? I mean, it, like, it, like, looks, even when, like, on a good Photoshop day, you know, he's sitting at, like, maybe, like, a seven. He's a good-looking guy. Yeah. 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 No, he's for a, sure. He's a handsome guy, but... When you're standing next to Chris Evans and Chris Hemsworth and it's all the other Chris's. Yeah, all the other Chris's. <laughs> yeah. Pine and 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 uh Pratt. You know, it's hard to keep up, but cuz he'd even like mentioned in a recent interview when he was like standing next to Thor, you know, playing Ant-Man and he'd like worked his ass off to like get into really good yeah. shape. He's just like, "Damn, I just wanted to give up." <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh. Man, can you imagine? I mean, just just standing next to someone like Chris Hemsworth, how just awful you would feel about yourself. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Just like, the, are we the same species? <laughs> That's the reason John Krasinski, because he was originally set to play Captain America. Yeah. That's the reason he left. Okay. Because he saw Chris Hemsworth walk by and he was like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Can't nope. Can't can't do it. Can't keep up. Yeah, that's why he left. But yeah, uh 
Well, but that's Paul what Rudd. I was saying. Paul Rudd, like his personality bumped him, bumps him up to a 10. <laughs> uh, this is what he said about it. He said, I do have awareness enough to know that when people hear that I've been picked for this, they would say, what? <laughs> this is not false humil- humility. There are so many people that should get this before me. When I think about myself, I think of myself as a husband and a father. Like, I'm that. My wife was stupefied. But, you know, she was very sweet about it. After some giggling and shock, and shock uh, she said, oh, they got it right. And that was very sweet. She was probably not telling the truth, but what's she going to say? <laughs> um, I'm hoping now that I'll finally be invited to some of those sexy dinners with Clooney and Pitt and B. Jordan. And I figure I'll be uh, on a lot more yachts. <laughs> so there you go. Very cool. What a classy guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one, by all accounts, one of the nicest guys in, in Hollywood, old Paul Rudd. So good for him. Oh, he yeah. He deserves it. Uh, does that mean that Chris might get it next year? He'd be in the running. I or would, now that I would uh, assume, uh, or he had his shot when he was playing, like you know, a superhero. It's usually somebody that's kind of on the radar. So if if Chris has you know some stuff coming up, maybe. But I'm still thinking Pattinson. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Batman mm-hmm. has got our vote. Um, so speaking of superheroes, Superman actor Henry Cavill no, uh, knows the internet wants him to play Captain Britain in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and he'd love to do it. Marvel fans have long been clamoring for Superman uh, Henry to join the Marvel Cinematic Universe, given Cavill's uh, famili- uh, familiarity with this very vocal internet voices that tend uh, to populate these spaces, it's likely he has seen many of the fandom posts of him playing Wolverine, Hercules, yet no one ever thought to ask him who he wanted to play in a Marvel movie. Until today. In an interview with Hollywood Reporter, uh, he had this to say. Uh, I'm never going to... Let's see. I'm never going to say a Marvel character that is already being played by somebody else because everyone's doing such an amazing job. That's kind of a PR answer. Sure. Uh, However, um, I have the internet, and I have seen the various rumors about Captain Britain, and that would be loads of fun. Uh, It would be really cool to do. Uh, Modestly, let's see. Let's see. A modernized version of that like the way that they modernized captain america mm-hmm. there's some um there's something fun about that and i do love being british <laughs> and i was like looking back at most of his movies and his filmography he's only played a britain dude like a couple of times yeah. a british dude right yeah. but he it and it's weird when you hear him on interviews where he's talking with a british accent mm-hmm. and I'm like hold up <laughs> i thought you were american yeah he's always doing a lot of times he's doing an American accent. Yeah. Uh, have we pulled? Let's see. Let me pull up his IMDb here. Um, let's see. It says here Brian Braddock is technically introduced in Avengers Endgame when Steve goes back in time and stumbles upon Peggy, who is the director of Shield. Uh, at this point, she mentions that Braddock hasn't checked in in a while to a subordinate. So he was that character was name dropped right in Endgame, but. See if it actually goes anywhere. Would you like to see him be uh, join the MCU? Oh yeah, yeah. Come over to the good side, <laughs> Cavill. I oh. know you still want to be Superman. I would still love you to be Superman, but it's such a shit show over there. Like, yeah, it's hit or miss. Come over to people that know what they're doing. Uh, you know? for the most part. Yeah. And then you see, like you know, their most recent. Maybe. <laughs> Which we'll talk about later. We'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. Uh, he did play one of the Holmes, right? Enola mm-hmm. Holmes. And then he played Sherlock Holmes. Uh, the Man from Uncle. The man from Uncle. I'm trying to think of any of it. Uh, but that's pretty much it. For the most part, he plays more of an American dude. Man from Uncle was a really underrated film. Oh it yeah. It didn't do a lot of a lot of money, but it's it's a good movie. It it really is. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of cool fight scenes in the mm-hmm. mix, especially that bathroom scene. Yes. Yeah. 
I'm like, damn, all right, I could see him playing James Bond. Yeah. <laughs> Be cool if he did play James Bond. But yeah, I'd I'd love to see him play Captain Britain. I think that'd be I think that'd be really cool. Zane. Um He's got the podcast stamp of approval. He does. And that's you know, I'm sure that's what he was waiting for. He really was, yeah. Like what do the guys from World War G think? <laughs> He's like, uh I'd I'd be interested, but I want to hear what they have to say first. I mean everybody knows him as Henry Cavill. We call him Hank. Yeah. <laughs> because well, you Hank. Know, yeah. <laughs> That's, you know, that's, that's how When are you going to have us on for The Witcher 3, you know? <laughs> <laughs> when are you going to be on the podcast, Hank? Hanky C, that's what we call him. <laughs> Hanky baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, it was pretty much guessed that Squid Game was going to get a season two. Right. Like, it was pretty much assumed. There was a couple of cliffhangers mm-hmm. and questions that we had. Well, Squid Game season two creator confirms, uh, Gi Hun. We'll be back for the sequel. I'm sure I said his name correctly. Yeah. In a recent interview with Associated Press, Squid Game creator and director Huang Dong Hyuk, I'm sure I said that correctly too. Sounds correct. Has opened up about the future Netflix the future of Netflix's hit South Korea thriller, uh, which had become an instant worldwide sensation. Huang confirms that he and lead star Lee Jung Jung. Jai, or Jay, are indeed coming back for Squid Game Season 2, revealing that he is currently in the planning process for it. He said, quote, So there's been so much pressure, so much demand, and so much love for a second season. So I almost feel like you leave us no choice. But I will say there will indeed be a second season. It's in my head right now. I'm in the planning process currently. That, to me, tells me... It's not really like he had a plan to do it, but with such success. Yeah, I bet he probably... I don't like shows that do that, dude. Like, that that kind of bugs me. I'm like, I... And I get that there's still lots of questions we have, so it makes it... He left it open for that. Yeah. For sure. But it also really bugs me when shows are like, oh, wow, we did really super well. Or even movies. Yeah. When they do so well, they're just like, hey, let's quickly make a sequel. And it's like, no, no, you yeah, don't. Yeah, it's not needed. Usually you kind of get crap from, right. from that. But um, I I would like to think that he at least had an idea in his mind. Like, if I ever do do a season two, I'll probably go in this direction. But I don't think he was expecting it to be such a massive hit that it was. No, I don't think anybody was. Yeah. Uh, which, those make some of the best shows, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, the ones that come out of nowhere. And pe- like it's more word of mouth yeah. that gets it circulating and buzz surrounding it. Well, that's why I watched it cuz like everybody was talking about it. So how are they really going to have like uh any big surprises or shock factors like they did in the first season? Because you weren't expecting them to go into this game where they were going to like get killed, yeah. right? Um I don't know, do you uh, do the whole games again or do you him go back the, to the game, yeah, or follow the lead, and maybe, maybe you go behind the scenes. Maybe you know, maybe, you get rid of the hair, yeah. like the, the weird hair choice. Yeah, yeah. I I, I don't know what you do. Uh, I guess like the big reveal could be who's actually going to become the Squid Game master, like the head honcho, right? right? Who's going to don the mask? Right, 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 right. That's, I think, would be, like, really interesting to find out whether those pictures actually got sent, if there's going to be more of, like, a investigation going on. Um, I mean, there's definitely material and stuff that they have to work with. It just always kind of irritates me that something does really well, and then they want, like, another one, or they want more. Well, and, and I get it, because I'm also guilty of that as well, when, I, like, I watch a show, and I'm just like, oh, I wish there was, like, more mm-hmm. to it, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, Um but only if it's if it's needed. Sure. And I mean, you know, <sighs> Stranger Things is on season four. Mm-hmm. So Uh and I'm thinking I'm hoping that's kinda like it. I'm hoping so too. Right? Yeah. Those uh, those kids are getting old and it's I think it's time to end it. Right. It, it you can only play like a kid for so yeah. long when you're more of an uh, 
an adult. And we don't want Stranger Things the high school years. So let's mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I think I think they'll probably wrap it up after this one. Plus, uh, it'd be difficult to hold all of the people still together to keep them going, right? Yeah. They're all wanting to do different other movies, and they're busy with their scheduling. Right. And you'd have to, like, pay them so much money to keep them coming back. Yeah. Well, you know, Finn Wolfhard, he's doing, like, every horror film that comes out. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, he's in demand right now. Right. Uh, same with Millie Bobby Brown. Yeah. She's in demand. Uh, a couple of the other ones have done pretty well. Like... I haven't seen them in much, the other kids. No. Yeah. The other teens. Yeah. <laughs> the other young adults. <laughs> uh, so, the... Or apparently, the running time for Spider-Man No Way Home has been announced. Spider-Man No Way Home looks to be longer than any other Spider-Man film to date. Uh, this is, uh, apparently it's going to be two hours and 39 minutes. This places it 26 minutes longer than Homecoming and 30 minutes above Far From Home. Now I know that Troy, like, is a huge movie buff and he is very familiar with the actors, mm -hmm. like more so than I, yeah. uh, with the actors and like everybody like <sighs> involved in the, the film. But as far as the running time, I kind of wanted to like see how good of a guesser you are. Okay. Ah, uh, see, because I'm pretty damn amazing at guessing the rotten. T like for some weird reason, I have a super ability to guess like Rotten Tomato scores. <laughs> yeah, so, and, and how much move, how much money a movie is made? You're pretty good at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to see how well you would do as far as running time goes. <sighs> okay. So, the first Spider-Man, just Spider-Man. Tobey Maguire. Um, I'm going to guess that one was an, an hour. We're, 40, well, let's 45. go with like just minutes. Let's just, because that's what they've got. These oh, okay. okay, down okay. Into. How many minutes? Um, 85 minutes. 121. Huh. Right? Much longer. Like, longer yeah. than I thought. Yeah. Two hours. Okay. Okay. Spider-Man 2. That one had to hit the two-hour mark, too. I bet it was a little longer than the first one. Um, a hundred and... A hundred and... Tw what was the first one again? 121 minutes. All right. That one came in at 128. Ooh, damn. Uh, 127. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. And then Spider-Man 3? It's the best of the three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that masterpiece. <laughs> I'm going to say it came in at even two hours, so 120 minutes. Uh, it is 139 minutes. Oh, God. Right? <laughs> Ran way longer Ugh. than it needed to be. <laughs> I, was, I guess I was hoping that that's how long it was. Right. <laughs> uh, the Amazing Spider-Man. The Amazing Spider-Man. Do you remember it being like a longer movie, shorter movie? You know what I mean? It's hard to, yeah. Um, a hundred and twenty minutes. Uh, hundred and thirty-six. Oh, man, okay, right? All right, okay. And right. one final, last one, because I already told you the other two. Uh, one final, last one. Amazing Spider-Man two. A hundred and thirty-three minutes. Uh, one forty-four. Damn it! So not 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 too far off. You're like uh, I always forget to add the credits. Yeah, <laughs> that's my problem. <laughs> okay. But but seriously, that's going to be quite a lengthy movie, right? I think, well, I think they have a lot to cover. No, it, yeah, a lot to talk about. Probably a few things to wrap up. Tie in the multiverse into the mix of yeah. things. Yeah. Add it, like bring in a couple of characters you weren't expecting. Mm -hmm. oh, although trailers nowadays. Are making it very difficult for us to not know what to completely expect in the movie. Yeah. Um, um, occasionally, I'll watch a trailer and I'll be like, "Well, I don't need to see the movie. Right? I know the whole story." There are some movies where I will straight up not watch the trailers, like the Star Wars prequels. I didn't watch the trailers. 
Okay. Because I don't want to know anything going in. Yeah. Uh, some of the bigger Marvel films, like Endgame, I didn't watch any trailer to. Just um, kind of want to be completely yeah. surprised. But I mean, in this one, if there are more trailers that come out, I don't think I'll watch them. Okay. Uh, I think I'll try to avoid them. I, I don't mind the teaser one. That's kind of fun. And then also like one or two of the first ones. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Like that final trailer before the movie comes out, like they pretty much tell you everything there is to know. Yeah. Like leave some mystery, guys. Yeah. Like I don't want to know if Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire is going to be in it. Mm hmm. Uh, I want to be surprised. Even though it's hard to like not hear them talking about it on talk shows. Yeah. Right? Oh no, you're going to be like disappointed. Like, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Bitch, please. <laughs> um, okay. So, also last week, we talked about how uh, Chris Pratt was going to be the voice of Garfield. He's playing Mario, now he's playing Garfield. Mm -hmm. Who next? And we were not crazy about that decision. Or well, apparently, we weren't the only ones. Because the internet wants Matt Berry to voice Garfield, not Chris Pratt. Now, if you don't know who Matt Berry is, um, Berry is known for his deadpan delivery and creative approach to pronunciation, um, often putting on elaborately British spin on words that make you want to repeat them later. Uh, he was in... He's in What We Do in the Shadows. Yes. Matt Berry from What We Do in the Shadows. Um, so pretty much most of the internet thinks that it's having Chris Pratt do it. It's an okay choice, but they put it here. It's a very unimaginative choice. And I think it that's is. the perfect way to put it. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get like a character actor in there. Let's get someone who's known for doing voices, uh -huh. you know, let's get a vampire in the mix. Yes, exactly. Get Laszlo over here. Um, no, he would be an excellent choice. You know who I could also see? Um, what's his bucket from the office? Uh, his name. What's the character name? Now I completely lost it. It's like, it's one of those podcast brains. Uh, it Jim, Dwight, Kevin, Kevin, Andy, Kevin, 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 Kevin. Uh, yeah. Brian, Brian. Baumgartner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he'd be good. He'd be kind of like just somebody a little bit different that kind of has like a more fuller voice. Yeah, somebody has kind of that bigger, not, not, a, not like a lazy voice, but somebody has more of a no, yeah, lazy voice. Actually, that work that works because <laughs> that's how Garfield is. He's very lazy. Yes. So you need a voice that sounds like you're just you're just over it. You're just uh, I've, I've had enough. I hate Mondays. Which I never understood why a cat hates Mondays. Yeah. Why does a cat have have <laughs> any sort of 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 comprehension on what a weekend is? <laughs> I can understand the the lasagna thing. Yeah. Because cats, you know, animals and food, and you know, I get that. But the whole Monday thing, I never understood. Hmm. There's no truth in that art. <laughs> you hear that art? Hear that, Jim Davis? Oh no, I meant uh, art the the character. Oh okay. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna use this segue. Speaking of cats, <laughs> that works. <laughs> Wicked. Uh, there's a petition going around. Fans have a petition that they started. Uh, to get James Corden uh, out of Wicked. <laughs> this petition, like, I know how much we love petitions and all, yes. but this petition uh, has gotten over 16,000 signatures within just two days. Yeah. Yeah. They did not like him in Wicked, and it was, or in Cats. Cats, yeah. Yeah, they want him... Far, far away from any musicals going forward. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he can somewhat carry a tune. He can. I mean, when he was in, um, uh, not it's my turn, not podcast brain, Into the Woods. Yes. Yeah, he can sing, but he's kind of, yeah, 
talk about unimaginative. He's the same same thing. He's very vanilla, and he he's kind of annoying and just nobody. I think people are just kind of sick of him. Absolutely, I'm sick of him. Uh, I don't he's even also watch in him. Peter Rabbit emoji movie. Yes, the dude. He's not an actor. No, no. No. Like there's occasionally I I initially remember thinking a wrestler that's going to be an actor, you know, that's so weird mm-hmm. and it actually worked. But a late night show host being an actor, I don't know, it it doesn't work for whatever reason. And I think is for whatever reason like his sense of humor it's not playing well with American audiences. Mm-hmm. Um and I think people are just kind of tired of his shtick because his show has now become, okay, what's popular? What's the trends? What are people doing on TikTok and stuff like that? Let's do that. Like, yeah. that's what his show has become. It's not about having interesting interviews with actors that have movies coming out or musicians. It's about what's popular. What can we get to what's go viral? What's trending? What can we get to go viral? Yep. What can we, like, turn into a TikTok? Yeah. And and I think audiences are starting to see that, and they're just tired of it. I would love to actually like see the ratings for his show because I'm I imagine it's not doing so well. Perhaps his style of comedy work better across the pond. Yeah. <laughs> so go 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 back go back to England, James. And stay out of our musicals. Yeah. Um. I was going to say the only musical that I could ever see him potentially being in is uh, Beauty and the Beast. And do you know which character I would have him play? Uh, Cogsworth. He, uh, the clock? Nope. No, no, no. no. Uh, Gaston, Gaston's right hand man. Oh, LeFou? Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. LeFou does mean the fool. So, yeah, that makes <laughs> sense. So, you know what's funny? What's that? Just scrolling down here, and it has a related article. Wizard of Oz's secret dead munchkin myth explained. Nuh-uh. Mm-hmm. What the hell? Let's click on it. Yes. A sinister urban legend about the Wizard of Oz involves an apparent death of a lovelorn munchkin on camera. Here's a myth debunked and explained. Uh, so we kind of talked about before, blah, 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 blah. However, on, upon closer inspection, the assumption can easily be debunked as it is simply the silhouette of a bird within the set of the movie. This revelation is backed by the fact that several birds of varying sizes were borrowed from the Los Angeles Zoo and allowed to roam the indoor set in order to grant it a more outdoorsy feel. A good example of this would be the appearance of a peacock outside the Tin Woodsman's shack while Dorothy and Scarecrow attempt to revive him. Hence, the figure in question that has been wrongfully interpreted as a hanging body is, in fact a large bird of the likes of an emu or crane disproving the urban legend. Does that look like a crane to you? Um, in that blurry photo? No, it doesn't. <laughs> I'm saying, but they but probably look, doctored the footage. They did not doctor they the footage. They absolutely did. You can't, there's no way they could ha- have any sort of technology back then to doctor the footage. I'm saying when they really re-release it on Blu-ray, oh, God. they gotten rid of all the tapes. It's been disproved and disbunked many, many times. Not only by you know people like this, but by people that were on the set. Because this myth has been around since the movie came out. Agree to disagree. There is no hanging. No, there is no disagreeing. I agree to disagree. There is no disagreeing. <laughs> <laughs> you can't disagree with truth. This is going to be a hill I might die on now. I've decided. <sighs> okay. Hang on. Hang on. I'm going to look up. I'm going to look up images myself. All right. All right. All right. Let's see. Crane. Let's see. Yeah, it's a crane or a stork. Or an emu. Going off of this image right here. Let's see. Uh, 
Okay. From the footage, zoom in. Yeah, it's a bird. It's a bird. Mm. It's a bird. It's more like a plane. It's <laughs> it's Superman. <laughs> okay. Now look at this image I found. Okay. Tell me that's not a bird. Easily doctored. That's not it's even not like doctored. That's, that's not what it's it looks like. It's ripped right from the movie. That's be it doesn't look like that because the bird moves in the shot. He moves in the frame. You can see him move. Let's see. Let's actually watch the footage. Yes, let's. Never thought we'd be talking about this today, but it's fine. Not images. Let's go to actual footage. Let's dig on this hill that you're apparently going to die on. Yeah, like, according to TMZ. <laughs> no, not TMZ. <laughs> hmm. The unusual movement of the bird in the background of the scene became a subject of speculation for those viewing the film on home video, as they were able to rewind and play the scene in slow motion, birthing wild theories of an actor driven to despair over his unrequited love for a female munchkin. The dead munchkin myth was cemented into popular consciousness consciousness during the heavy promotion of special video re-release of The Wizard of Oz on its 50th anniversary in 19, 1989. This, in conjunction with the unfortunate practical circumstances that surrounded the cast, lent an aura of credibility to the theory. Even after the myth was debunked, sizable audiences viewed the film as one with sim sinister undertones, which was exasperated by the alleged presence of dark subliminal symbolism. Did you find it? Yeah. Okay. He's slowing it down. Right. Clearly, this is a VHS copy. Aha! Oh, for God's sake. Hey, Dorothy. Hurry up. No, he showed it beforehand. Alright. That's a horrible Kathy. Alright, 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 alright. Hang on, hang on. When all else fails, go to YouTube. Oh, here we go. Here you go, Okay, okay. Let's check it out. Okay. Damn it, what the hell? Oh, here it is, okay. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's a, no, it's a bird. It's a fucking bird. Look at the very end. Something moved. It stretched its wings. That was wings. a leg. It stretched That was wings. a leg. Look at it again. No. It stretched its wings. wings. Those are not wings. That was a foot. That was not a foot. What are you talking about? Okay, there we go. Can you see? It's a giant bird stretching its wings. No. <laughs> no. No, it's a giant bird. I mean... No, there's no I mean. It is a giant bird. <laughs> Okay, I got another video right here. All right. All right. Come on. Perhaps it was just because he was on a Android. Now that we have an iPhone. <laughs> oh, shut up! Shut up! Blah 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 blah. Is this the same video? I don't believe so. Maybe it is. I don't know. Where he puts in the VHS tape? Okay, it is the same video. Now we're going to watch it in 4K. Alright. Okay, they're walking. They're walking. It's right past this. That's weird that there's a face, but... Oh, 
Okay. It's a bird. Oh, see, that's totally a bird. It's not a. He even said it's totally a bird. So, oh, I'm, okay. It's a bird totally. stretching its wings. <laughs> <sighs> you don't think before they released it, they kind of changed no! it? No. Like, mm -mm. The original. Okay, where this all started, like I said in the in the, in the article, was in 1989. With yeah. the VHS release of the 50th anniversary, Baby. they did not have the technology in 1989 to go in and doctor footage. They just did not have that technology. Well, uh, um, I think they might have, Troy, because if you're going off of like 1969, where they already had. Uh, the ability to oh, doctor other footage? <laughs> my god. <laughs> if they had the ability to doctor footage back in 69, you don't think in 80 or 89? They didn't have the ability to doctor footage in 20 69. Years, 20 years later? They didn't have the ability to do that in 69. <laughs> That's also my point. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been over the moon land. We've talked about the myths. Again, another one will just have to agree to disagree. Even though I've proven you wrong on that. Uh, have you? Yes! Every little question you had, I proved you wrong on it. <laughs> makes you feel any better. I'm not a flat earther. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> but aliens, the moon landing, and munchkins. Look, if there's <laughs> one thing I can get behind... It's a good woman. Aliens. <laughs> I can't definitely be behind a good woman, that's for sure. <laughs> aliens. Yeah. <laughs> Do I believe that they're little green men with giant heads? No. No. Yeah. But to say in this giant, vast universe that we are the only ones... That's pretty naive. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Okay, uh, there is kind of an idea thrown out there that I thought was kind of interesting and would make for a cool, like, film. Um, I can't remember where I've seen it, but they were talking about it, where he's like, what if alien, like, say we had the technology to get off this planet, and then, like, we fucked up that planet, whatever we landed on, so then we come back here to reclaim Earth, and those are the alien, you know, air quotes, aliens. Just humans that, you know, does that make sense? No. So, say like 40 years ago, we had the technology to, you know, send a rocket into space with like people. We go inhabit another planet. And we're like, wow, there's a lot more technology and stuff here. But then they kind of like somehow fuck up that planet. So then they come back to Earth to reclaim Earth. Mm. I see. I, well, I think all those UFO sightings are bullshit. Oh, same. But, yeah. again, they say we're, we're the only intelligent beings in this entire universe. <laughs> That's ridiculous. And why would they come here just to probe? <laughs> exactly. Why would they come billions of light years <laughs> to to hover around like somewhere in Arkansas Yeah, and <laughs> to probe some hillbilly <laughs> who was drunk on moonshine at the time? <laughs> Say, so, okay, we got the information, whatever we needed from this guy's ass. <laughs> Let's go home. I never understood the whole, what was it? Was it signs? Yeah. Um, that has, what we do in the shadows? Um, signs where they come to a planet that's completely um, covered, like 75% of what is water. Yeah. And that's what they can't touch or they're worried about. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That, that never made any sense. <sighs> All right. Now my blood pressure has gone back down. Trey's over there, you know, like readjusting his watch, like <laughs> checking his blood pressure. Let's get into our revs and rights. Uh, so, as I mentioned, at the top of the show, I did see Eternals again with the GF and her family. And 
just really quick, I'd say on second viewing, um, I liked it a little better. Okay. Now that I was kind of able to see what was going on... You cared about the characters a little bit more? Yeah, I was kind of able to focus a bit more on the characters, and since I knew the pl- where the plot was going, I was able to kind of focus more on, on that and what led up to it, and I liked it better the second time. Would um, you re-change your... Uh, like, add a half a point or a full point to your initial review? Uh, half a point. Okay. I'd give it a half point. I don't remember what my initial review was, but whatever it was, add a half of it. Yeah. Um, the one show that I like finished, uh, I felt I'm already like too far invested in the show, so I'm like, ah, I might as well watch the new season. It was like me with Arrow. Right? You're like, uh, I, I gotta finish it now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, no turning back. Yep, I'm too far in. I watched the fifth season of um, Big Mouth. Okay. And Big Mouth has always been about like potty humor and kids growing up and the changes that they're going through and yeah. dealing with like depression. This one dealt pretty heavy with depression and with anger. Those were some of the like heavy hitters. Um, but it was interesting in one of the last episodes, um, they actually bring in real life characters into the mix, but then they also explain what these other um I don't want to give anything away, but what these other people are, they kind of like explained a little bit more, which was like fascinating. Uh overall I thought it had like some pretty funny like parts in it. It wasn't their best season and I think it's kind of like tapering off or this could potentially be the last season. Um I think that I would probably, out of five worms, I'm going to have to give this one a a two. Okay. I think overall, like if they were to finish up on this note and finish up the whole entire series, I would have to give the whole series possibly a three. I kind of enjoyed it. It was it's kind of amusing. Uh, it has some funny like crass humor, but like. Now, overall, it's entertaining enough to watch it, but this season for sure is definitely out of two. I just, I've never had a um, desire to, yeah, even, like, desire to watch it. Yeah. Like every time I've seen previews for it, I'm like, that doesn't look like anything I'd be interested in. <laughs> to be honest, and I like the people that are in it, right? But it just doesn't never appeal to me. Uh, they do introduce a lot of. They have a lot of um, cameos. From other characters and from other people, uh, Nathan Fillion's even in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's kind of funny to like watch like what they're gonna do with it. But yeah, okay. Best watched drunk. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, <clears throat> I actually have a recommendation this week. All right. And a it's... lot of the times we focus heavily on just the reviews mm-hmm. and not so much recommendations. So yeah. I have a podcast recommendation. Uh, it's called The Plot Thickens from Turner Classic Movies. Huh. Uh, they're in... They're on the third season. Um, but they have 24 episodes out. And particularly, I got into it because of this latest season. Uh, they're going through the life and career of Lucille Ball. Oh, okay. Yeah, which has been really, really interesting. I think it's going to be like a 10-part series. They currently have five episodes out currently. Yeah, episode 10. Yep. Um, but it's if you're interested in like old Hollywood or if you're a fan of I Love Lucy um, or, you know, you have the Ricardos movie coming out soon. If you want to learn more about them, I highly recommend this podcast. Uh, especially when they get into the life of Desi Arnaz. That was really interesting. Because in Cuba, his family was really high up. They were very wealthy. Um, his uncle was like a VP at Bacardi Rum. Uh, his dad was a high-ranking government official. Like, they were really well-to-do. 
until a revolt happened and their family had to flee the country. He went to Florida. And when he got to high school, his best friend in high school was Al Capone Jr. Seriously? Yeah. What? Like, that was his buddy. Yeah. Was Al Capone's son. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, so that was really interesting. And just learning about them and their extremely imperfect marriage, by the way. Um, It's been fascinating. So, if you're interested in that sort of stuff, like me, you like classic TV, old Hollywood, love to learn about that stuff, definitely check out The Plot Thickens. I think you'll really enjoy it. And so they'll just do a deep dive on one TV show? Um, well, season two, they talked about... Uh, season two... I'm trying to think. Let's see, I've got seasons coming. Wait, season two, uh, oh, I think... Yeah, so in season two, they talked about this movie called The Bonfire of the Vanities. Um, and the entire like saga about getting that movie made. And then in season one, uh, they talked about this guy, Peter Bogdanovich. Um, but I really wasn't interested in those, per se. Like I said, I just started listening to it because of this latest season. I was really interested, so... Do they give you any hints or clues as to what the next season will be about? No. no. But yeah, so that's my recommendation for this week. Awesome. Yeah, you just go like type that in the Plot Thickens um, podcast and pulls right up. Yeah. With all their other seasons, everything else. Yeah, I, I listened to it at work the other day and it... And, Made my work day go by quicker, so that was nice. Fair enough. All right. Sweet. So that's going to do it for today, kids. Uh, tune on over to our DLC. Um, Disney Plus and Marvel just released a lot of teasers, so we're going to talk about those, um, our thoughts and feelings. Uh, so head over there. Click over there. But for now, uh, if you want to listen to all of our episodes and our DLCs, Head to patreon.com slash world war G, or if you just want to listen to the episodes proper, you can go to uh, uh, worldwarg.podbean.com or wherever podcasts, uh, wherever you get your podcasts, we're everywhere. Or even on Audible, by the way. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> If you want to find us on social media, we're at facebook.com slash World War G podcast. Uh, we're on Instagram. We don't do much there, honestly. We're on TikTok. That's also slowed down quite a bit. Find us on on uh, Facebook. Yeah. We do a lot on Facebook. Uh, if you'd like to find our merchandise, you can head to tpublic.com or in the search bar, just type in World War G and hit the shoppings tab. Um, or shopping tab because shopping's not a word uh, or you can email us anytime day or night at worldwargpod at gmail.com that is the actual email I'm looking at it right now make sure I got it right this time so this has been World War G that has been Minnesota's favorite son AJ and that has been Utah's Dark Knight Troy <laughs> Fair enough. Um, stay geeky, my friends.